excited because I finally got a desalting column and I've wanted these forever. And so this is a great alternative to dialysis, which I really hate, for removing small little things like salts and dyes from a solution of proteins that contains those unwanted salts and dyes. It's really great for doing things like removing a midazole after a histag purification or removing salts from any sort of affinity chromatography purification before you want to move on to another step like ion exchange chromatography where you need to start at a low salt concentration. It's also just great if you want to change out the buffer. And so how does it work? Basically, this is filled with these little beads and in the case of these columns, these are actually like dextran, so it's a sugar. And these beads have these little pores and I like to think of them as secret tunnels and they're really, really tiny little pores. They have secret little entrances and so only little tiny things can go through them. But the little tiny things kind of have to go through them, whereas the big things, they just go around. And so the big things are actually going to travel faster through one of these. It's just like your typical size exclusion column for size exclusion chromatography, except that in this case, the pores are bigger and multi-sized, so you can actually separate proteins based on their size, whereas here, they're really tiny pores. So it's just a bulk separation between those little salts and stuff that can go into those pores, that can go through those secret tunnels that have to go through them and thus travel slowly, and the proteins, the other really big stuff, that has to, that basically can't get into them, and so it just goes around. So the stuff that comes in is going to, the big stuff that stuff comes in is going to come out with the little stuff that had come in before it. And the little stuff that comes in is going to come out after it. After it long enough, that you're able to actually kind of trap it in the column and remove it from what you had. Whatever was in the column already, so whatever you equilibrated the column with before is going to come out with the protein that is now coming in. And so you are able to exchange the buffer and get rid of the salt that came in with your protein. Pretty awesome, right? So there, this is a desalting column. This is a big one, so I'm really excited about it. It can take like 15 mils of volume. In the past, I've used smaller ones, so like PD-10 columns, which are good for smaller volumes, as well as I've actually used little spin columns, G, like G25 macrospin columns. And these work similar ways, but they're on different scales. The small little ones, they actually work in like a spin centrifuge. And the reason why I was using those was to actually remove ATP and ADP from labeling reactions of RNA. So they can be used for RNA and DNA and that sort of thing, often to remove dyes and other things that you don't want. In the case of protein, we're often trying to remove salts, things like imidazole, things like those high concentration of our salts that we're using to help us in our lysis steps that we don't want interfering in subsequent steps such as ion exchange chromatography. It's a great alternative to dialysis. Dialysis, it works with a pouch that pouch is going to let the small things out and your protein can't get out. So your protein is going to stay put and those salts and stuff are going to diffuse out. But because it relies on diffusion, it's really slow and you have to have a large volume of liquid on the outside that you then have to keep changing because you're re reaching equilibrium of concentrations inside and outside. With dialysis, it can happen in one of these kind of pre-made pouches or it can happen. You can do it with tubing and clips. This tubing is actually really small because I'm using it for something else, but I didn't have bigger tubing. And hopefully I won't need bigger tubing because I have my desalting column now. And so trying to do protein purification in between classes with undergraduates and then the undergraduates having classes too. I'm trying to make things as efficient as possible, save time, and save myself and my students from having to do dialysis because in the past it's one of those things where typically you do it overnight and you have to change out stuff and so I end up doing a lot of the work because I can't make my students come in when they have classes and all this stuff. So this is hopefully going to be really, really helpful. So I'm not repping for Cytiva or anything. I'm just really excited to try this out and I think it's going to be a big time saver and hopefully my proteins like it okay and I'm excited to use it. So we set up our desalting column and so we attach the tubing to it and then it'll go through and out and then here it'll go through the UV monitor into the fraction collector. We're going to use the sample pump to get our sample out and onto here, into here. And so we're just, for now, we're just going to do a little trial, mixing some imidazole with some protein and seeing if we can separate them. 
chosen metasol because the metasol also absorbs UV 280 light, so we should be able to see it come off and see our protein come off, which is just going to be either lysozyme. I think probably we'll just put some lysozyme on there just to, just to test the system out before we use it with our precious protein. But I'm excited to actually get to use it. In the case of like the bigger size occlusion, then you're going to typically want to go directly inject it from a sample loop because you'll be doing a smaller volume, but we're going to do a larger volume and so we'll use the sample pump. Alternative would be like a super loop or one of these bigger loops. And so when we do the size exclusion with the bigger col thinner columns, we're typically only going to do like 250 microliters or so, so we'll have a smaller loop on here, but this is just the 5 mil loop that was on here right now. And it kind of it serves as a temporary storage place before your sample goes on. Whereas the sample pump, it's going to pump it out of the tubing, out of the sample until it like reaches the air sensor and then it's going to stop and then take it through the column. To review, these desalting columns are great for removing small little things like salts and dyes from a solution of protein that contains those salts and dyes. It works by having these little pores or these secret tunnels that the little stuff like those salts and dyes are gonna have to travel through and so they're gonna go really slowly through, whereas your protein is gonna go around because your protein's too big to access those little pores. So your protein is gonna go fast. It's gonna come out with whatever was in the pores when, they, when your protein kind of like came in, but the stuff that came in with your protein, the little stuff that came in with your protein is gonna get stuck in those pores or it's gonna be traveling more slowly. So your protein is gonna come out with whatever was in there already. So you're exchanging the buffer and you're getting rid of the salt that was with your protein originally. It's an alternative to techniques like dialysis where it relies on diffusion to take the small things away from your protein because the small things can go through the membrane but your protein can't go through the membrane. So in that case your protein actually stays put in the little dialysis pouch and the small stuff comes out. In the case of this desalting column, everything is moving, but the big stuff is actually moving faster. So your protein is actually moving faster, and so everything's going to come out the column eventually. But as long as you separate your protein from the stuff that comes out later, you're able to separate your protein from the salt and the other stuff that you didn't want. This is majorly taking me back to my grad school days. I'm feeling very nostalgic and having a lot of fun, and it's just so gratifying getting to teach my students how to do this and so I never really just been the teacher teaching someone on an ACTA and getting to do it and getting to see their excitement and thinking about the excitement when I first used an ACTA is just got my heart happy.